What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and in today's video what we're going to be doing is we are actually going to be taking this 2013 Hyundai Sonata and we are going to be finally doing the work that needs to be done to it in order to send it out on a rental so that it can finally start making us money. Now in order to do this we have a handful of things that we need. Number one we need some sanding stuff. So take this out. Sander. Next, we're going to need some paint supplies, which can be found here, 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 and here. We're also going to need some of this masking tape. So right here, we have all the supplies that we need. We have the sander, which I will be using to sand down the car. I also have these sanding pads. These are the pads that I will be using. I got these for about $6 on Amazon. Then once I'm done sanding the car, we are going to use this plastic film to mask off the car. And then from there, HP will take over where he will paint and prime and touch up the car with this material here. Now, when it comes to this car, it is far from perfect. I mean, the paint is chipping and there is a lot of chipped paint all over the car. But the thing that is good is the fact that this was my sister's car and so I know what the upkeep and what the history of this car is because of the fact that it was me and HP taking care of the car while my sister owned it. And so even though the paint looks rough and it looks like it has seen better days, the car is actually in pretty decent condition and the issues that the car has is purely cosmetic. We recently got the car detailed, we paid $150 to have this car cleaned and we are super happy with how it turned out. But now it's time to get to work because the goal is to have this car finished and listed on Get Around by the beginning of next week. So let's get to sanding. So I guess it's time to get started. Gotta first turn on some Taylor Swift. The goal isn't to, you know, get down to the metal like I have right here. This is unintentional, but in some areas it's necessary because the point is we need to get these flakes off. Like if we leave any of these flakes, it's going to cause the paint to chip. And sometimes in order to get those flakes off, you have to really use the sander really effectively. And so that's why I am doing it the way that I'm doing. The goal is not to get all down to the metal, but just to scuff everything up so that the paint will adhere. So you can see here that here is the hood. So there is a lot of areas where I did go down to the metal, but that's because I needed to make the paint, like you can see here, this is no longer lifting, but it is like right here still. So we need to get all of those lifting spots gone. So now that we've gotten the hood down, we need to move on to the rest of the car. found some quarters. So the last thing to do today is I'm gonna take these quarters that I have found and I'm gonna go wash this at a self-serve car wash because we need to get all of this dust off because tomorrow I will be masking and I will be doing a coat of primer before HP starts to paint the car on Sunday.
So you can see here that I have sprayed down the car. It actually looks really, really good. I'm really, really happy with how this came out. You can barely even tell that this paint was like chipping. It's just like the raw metal. Now, what we need to do with it now is it's going to dry overnight. It's not gonna rust overnight, but typically you don't want like this bare metal to be exposed to water, but it'll be fine. So the next phase of this entire process is I'm going to let this car dry overnight. And then from there, we are going to mask and we are going to prime it tomorrow to prep it for paint on Sunday. So let's make it tomorrow in three, two, one. And we are back. So it is currently the next day. It is Saturday and you can see here that the car turned out, I think, pretty well. You know, here is the, the car. It's still a bit dusty, so I am going to go and wipe it down one more time. But that's what it looks like. It is, like, sanded down really, really well. Again, we're doing the hood, we're doing the passenger mirror, and then we are doing the trunk as well. So the next step in the process is as follows. There's Nico right there. Hey, Nico. So here are the next steps of what we need to do or what I need to do before HP paints tonight. So I'm going to mask off the car. This is masking plastic. It has like the tape built into it. So I'm going to be masking off the car. It will be pretty easy to do because of the fact that we're just painting two kind of big chunks of the car. And so that will make it significantly easier. And then once I mask up the car, I'm going to have to prime it. So it's important to prime it where the metal is showing. Otherwise the car will rust. And so that is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, Google, play Taylor Swift. Playing Taylor Swift on Spotify. So now the next step in this process is to prime it. This is just automotive primer that we got from Home Depot. I think it's like $10 a can, pretty affordable, but I'm going to go ahead and do a few thin coats of primer where the car is showing bare metal. So once again, areas like this, there's no need to do on the entire car, just where the bare metal is shown. dry. Okay, so we have primed the car. You can see here the primer has dried and now HP is finally home from work and he can actually paint the car with the paint that we bought. Now we got this paint paint matched from the online paint retailer automotive touch-up and for I think three or four containers it was um, I think like $75 so fairly affordable. So taking a look, we uh, did a couple of coats uh, with our automotive touch-up. Um, as you can see, not the best looking job, but we're not going for perfection. We're really just trying to make sure that we can at least make sure that it doesn't have clear falling off the vehicle. Uh, speaking of clear, we actually have a can right here. I kind of preheated this in some water and that way it lays on nice and even. My goal is to try to put enough clear on here that it looks like the factory original paint, which is kind of what we're going for. Nothing extraordinary. We're not trying to win a car show by any means, but I think this is a big improvement over what was uh, on there before. Okay, so it is about three days later and HP has been clear coating the entire car. It required quite a lot of coats just because it's rattle can and it's not the highest quality paint ever, but we are super, super happy with how it came out. So now we just need to take off the plastic. Alright guys, as you can see, 
The uh, finished product for the Hyundai is perfect. Okay, well, maybe not perfect, but we're not going for perfect. We're going for better than it was, and I'd say it's actually a pretty good job. Now, because we use a rattle can, we're gonna have some streaks going across, and that's just due to how the paint lays down, but again, not going for perfect. Technically, if you wanted to do a little bit better job, you could take some wet sanding, maybe even it out a little bit, make it a little more smooth, but not bad at all. So we did the hood, we did this mirror. As we can see, a little bit of clear kind of pushing up from the old one, but we're not interested in bringing this down to bare bones. Just make it better looking. And lastly, let's go to the trunk. Trunk, same thing in the front, a little bit of streaking on the sides, not terrible. So I'd say this is a pretty good job well done, uh, considering that it no longer looks like some of these really bad pieces on top of the... Uh, uh, roof as well, which this is going to happen over time. I mean, this vehicle is a few years old, and when you start looking at vehicles in this price range, you're not going to get Maserati type paint. You're going to get what you paid for at the time, and this is how it turns out over the course of a couple of years. But again, this is uh, a pretty quick DIY and how to save money uh, without having to pay a thousand dollars for a respray on the front and rear of the vehicle. All right, you guys, so that is the video on how we got this car ready for Turo. It will start getting listed out within the next week, so we'll keep you guys up to date on how much money this car brings in versus how much it costs us to get it up and running. And as always, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and we will see you guys in the next video.